welcome to Geography 1100, Physical Geography. Um, one of my goals for the course is to have you uh, pay attention to what you see around you in the natural landscape, um, to try to see patterns in the vegetation or the geology. Think about what factors might be causing those um, patterns that you're seeing, or what makes that particular place distinctive. In lecture, we tend to think about global patterns, kind of the broad scale, but with this landscape observation project, um, we're going to take it local, right, look at a fine scale pattern. One of the added benefits is it gets you out of the house, right, everybody needs that. Um, it's hard to be stressed when you're, in a, when you're outside, when you're in a, a beautiful place like this. So these projects aren't about adding stress to you, right, so there's no penalty for misidentifying a tree or anything like that. The, the idea is just to pay attention, to ask questions, and try to think if you can um, find an answer to that question. So with these virtual field trips, what I'd like to do, my objective here, is to point out some things that you might want to pay attention to for your site. Uh, we'll do several of these throughout the semester and kind of think about some things that you might want to consider. Everybody's site is different though, so what you see is going to be different than what I see or really what any other student sees in the course. So there's no right or wrong answer in that regard. So what makes a good site? Obviously number one is accessibility. Uh, hopefully there's a natural area uh, near your place where you're living now that you can visit on a regular basis throughout the semester. In terms of the site itself, um, variation is good to pick up on. Um, different vegetation types within your area, uh, maybe different light levels reaching the ground, differences in moisture uh, throughout the site, or even topography, the lay of the land. Right? If you have ridges down to valleys, but that can be subtle too, depending on your place. So it's, it's not a requirement, but if you have the choice, it's something to look for. Water is another really key factor for um, adding variety to your landscape. So it can be as small as a, a little pond or a lake, or it can be moving water, a little creek, a little stream. Uh, and again, if you don't have water on your site, that, that's fine, but it, it does, uh, it can add variability, give you something to pay attention to. And then maybe the last thing would be edges, or what we'll later call ecotones, boundaries. So maybe it's a little wooded area adjacent to a field. So that boundary has some interesting things going on, and you can compare those different sites. The key factor here, though, is, is that natural processes have to be operating, right? So you can't use the lawn outside your apartment complex or the ball fields uh, in your town, right? Those, those turf grass is maintained by constant mowing, right? That's a human-modified landscape. But if you have a wooded area behind your house, that's fine. Or thinking about that river again, if they put boulder riprap along it to stabilize the bank, that's an engineered landscape, right? So you want um, natural processes to have been operating long enough to be able to kind of see their results. We can't entirely avoid human activity, though, especially human activity of the past. So that's actually going to be a topic for a later video that we that we think about uh, in terms of size just big enough for you to observe things that you're seeing from variation um, and small enough that you can take it all in, right? So uh, it doesn't have to be gigantic, but that you're picking up some variability within the site that you can then talk about. So the next things I like to do is demonstrate uh, an app for plant identification. It's pretty neat, not only for this uh, project, but just to have. It's kind of cool to be able to shine it on a bug or a tree or a flower, um, a bird, and, and see what that is. So I'll show you. So the app I'm going to show you, the one I have on my phone, is called Seek. Right? Um, let's just see what it can do. So here's a few plants. So we got stick seed. I have stick seed <laughs> on, my plant, on my pants. So an aptly named plant. Here we have bottle brush grass, and it's got a tussock moth climbing on it, growing right next to an ash tree. 
Um, so it's neat to be able to identify animals, plants. Uh, you might find it useful. It might be a good blog entry if, if um, you have a, a species that's dominant or kind of distinctive. Maybe you can Google it and read up a little bit about it and, and talk about that uh, on your entry. Um, my parting thought to you before we end this uh, video is to take a lot of pictures. When things are going to change with the seasons. You can document that. Um, perhaps in the later in the course, you'll you'll learn some things that you can then apply to those pictures you you learned earlier, right? To interpret those. Um, we live in a deciduous forest. We'll we'll be talking about that, which means by about mid October, most of the trees are going to lose all their leaves. This guy, Buckeye, is already starting, right? And so it's a lot easier to identify plants if you can see the leaves on them. So I hope this has been helpful to you, um, and I'll see you next video.